Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Ime TS45 air rifle. TS-45 is a Chinese spring piston air rifle, uh, made I think in the 80s, possibly late 70s, and whilst it is designated as the TS-45, that model number actually refers to a number of similar air rifles made by a number of different manufacturers, uh, just like how today you can get generic Chinese guns such as the B2, which can be found with different manufacturers markings, including SMK and Westlake. Uh, incidentally, actually, I do have a video on a Westlake B2, so I'll put a link to that video in the description below in case you're interested. Now, it's very difficult to find out any definitive information about Chinese air guns, especially those made by scarcely documented manufacturers nearly 30 odd years ago. Uh, so, I think to explain a bit more, we need to take a closer look at the rifle. Before I look at the features and test this gun, I just wanted to talk a bit about the TS-45 and its origins and how I identified this particular rifle. Now, as I said earlier, the TS-45 was made by a number of different companies in China, including, amongst others, industry brand, Snowpeak, BAM, Norinco and Ime. Now, all of the different companies' guns were very similar, as they're all made in state-owned factories to the same general specification. However, some of the rifles have subtle differences with regard to features and build quality. So, it's best to think of the TS-45 as a generic term for a group or family of air rifles, rather than a specific model. The only problem, though, is that it's very difficult to tell which guns were made by which manufacturers. Now, the vast majority of the limited markings on this gun are found on the top of the compression chamber and there is very little English on this gun um, although uh, I have seen others that have made in China written in English underneath the logo. Um, the company logo is clearly some kind of mountain um, which still doesn't really narrow it down completely as the Snow Peak logo and maybe some of the others have a very similar mountain to the logo on Ime's guns. Um, and they're perhaps a rough imitation of the Feinweck Bow logo. We know this gun is made by Ime though, as that is what the translation of at least some of the Chinese characters says. Now the company is named after Mount Ime in Sichuan province in China, uh, near where these guns were manufactured. And I have read, although I haven't been able to confirm, that the Ime guns were made by the Jianshu Machine Tool Company in Chongqing, uh, but I haven't been able to confirm that. So going back to the model number, the TS-45, uh, none of the guns um, from any of the manufacturers actually have the model number marked on them. Uh, that's just the designation of this type of rifle. And it may even have been that TS-45 was purely the designation for export to the Western market. Now the reason I've titled this video as TS-45 slash EM-45 is because the EMA made TS-45 is one of the only versions of this gun that is properly documented anywhere. And John Walter, in his book, The Air Gun Book, actually refers to this as the EM45. You can see this top one here is the EMA rifle. Now, whilst the TS45 is renowned for being of dubious quality, uh, from all the research I've done and from looking at this rifle itself, it appears that the EMA one is by far the best incarnation of the TS45. Uh, being significantly better made and more accurate than its peers. Uh, all in all, actually, this isn't a bad little rifle. So, with the background out of the way, I think it's time we look at the rifle itself. Now, whilst I'm doing that, I'll point out some of the bits that varied between different manufacturers and even bits that varied uh, between gun to gun from the same manufacturers. As I think I said earlier, the TS-45 is a spring piston gun. Uh, more specifically, it's a side lever with a sliding breech rather than a loading tap. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of side levers as a right-handed shooter, but it does make the gun very well balanced, as the weight is centralised rather than being front heavy like on an underlever. 
uh, it does have quite a smooth action and a nice little spring-loaded catch for the lever. The rifle is 40 inches or 101.6 centimetres long and weighs around 7 pounds or 3.2 kilograms. It has an 18.5 inch or 47 centimetre rifle barrel and the barrel is actually quite good and it has a nice taper to it which is something you don't often find on air guns. Um, on the subject of barrel actually this gun is in 177 calibre and all of the other references to TS45 calibre I can find relate to 177 so that may well have been the only calibre it was made in uh, but I'm not sure. The stock is made of an unidentified hardwood it's a pretty basic stock without any kind of checkering or raised cheek piece or anything but it's relatively nicely shaped and it does have a recess for your fingers so you can get a good hold. Now as well as for the better weight distribution that I mentioned earlier on another benefit of a side lever is that there's no cutout on the underneath um, where there would be on a brake barrel or an under lever uh, which although makes it a tiny bit heavier it makes it feel a lot more solid and I think it actually looks a lot nicer as well. The quality of the finish is better than some modern cheap Chinese guns out there but it's not fantastic uh, it's just a basic lacquer or something I'd say though that where this one has aged slightly over time it's picked up a little bit of character and I think it actually makes it probably look like a nicer finish than it did when it left the factory the stock is largely ambidextrous uh, I don't think a left-handed shooter would have any problems with it but it does have a couple of subtle right-handed features there's a small cutout on the right hand side above the trigger guard um, which makes it comfortable for resting your trigger finger if you're a right-handed shooter and also the recesses for your fingers on the side of the stock are slightly offset which makes it slightly more comfortable for a right-handed shooter it has front and rear sling swivels on the underneath of the rifle uh, as far as I'm aware all TS-45s uh, had sling swivels but these ones are actually quite good quality uh, the swivels are just bits of metal bent round but the ends are then welded together to stop them pulling apart and there's actually a small metal insert set into the wood under the swivels to stop them rubbing on and wearing the wood and it's small details like that that show that the Eme guns are of slightly better quality than some of the other TS45s out there. At the rear of the stock is a metal butt plate which is actually a really cool feature. Now it's a relatively plain uh, butt plate but it does have this small recessed metal disc in it and this is actually covering a cavity in the stock and this disc is a spring-loaded cover and this reveals a green plastic tube hidden in the back which is a screw cap and I assume that is for storing pellets or something um, this is a relatively rare feature on these rifles but it is original as I have seen another one like it and then to put it back in, push it against it and just be careful, don't catch your fingers putting it back in. I'm now going to remove the stock to have a look at the trigger, the safety, or I should say the lack of one, and then I can also show you probably the biggest difference between this gun and most other TS 45s. So, to remove the stock, I need to remove the um, rear screws of the front sling swivel and the trigger guard. With the stock off you can see the trigger and you'll notice the absence of any kind of trigger unit. Uh, this gun has a direct sear whereby the top of the trigger blade acts as the sear itself. It's a very basic trigger mechanism so the trigger is single stage and non-adjustable. Uh, it's not a great trigger but it is usable. Now you can clearly see there's no safety of any sort on this rifle um, but as this is a sliding breech gun even more important than a regular, uh, regular safety catch uh, is an anti-bear trap safety to prevent the breech cover and piston shooting forward under the pressure of the mainspring uh, should the sear fail or the trigger be pulled during loading which is a big negative of the TS-45 rifles. Now we've all heard the horror stories about people losing the ends of their fingers when the breech closes uh, whilst they're still loading the gun and it's guns like the TS-45 that give rise to or at least significantly contribute to these stories. Uh, they are not renowned for being the safest air guns. Now expect the lack of anti-bear trap safety mechanisms on most TS-45s is largely because Chinese manufacturing in the late 70s and early 80s didn't really meet the safety standards expected in the West. 
Now that brings me to the biggest difference between this rifle and most other TS-45s. I think every other TS-45 I've ever seen has another metal section welded on to the underneath of the compression chamber here. Um, and that houses a ratchet system which acts as a safety system of sorts for the cocking lever. Um, with that mechanism, as the cocking lever is pulled back, it's held on a ratchet system so that it can't suddenly uh, fling forward and trap your fingers. Now it sounds good in theory, uh, but it's not an anti-bear trap, nor is it a substitute for one, because whilst it is held on the ratchet, uh, the sear isn't engaged, and when the gun is fully cocked and the sear engages, the ratchet disconnects. So the piston is only ever being held in place by one piece, not the two you'd have with a true anti-bear trap. But that being said, even though that is the case with most TS-45s, it is largely academic here, as not only does this particular rifle not have a uh, metal ratchet system underneath, uh, this I think is the only, ever, uh, the only TS-45 I've ever seen that does have a true anti-bear trap safety. Up here on the left of the sliding breech, there is a spring-loaded catch which matches the one for releasing the lever, and this is the anti-bear trap safety. But to make it easier to demonstrate how that works, I'm going to first put the stock back on. So when I cock the gun, the front of this breech cover slides back and past the end of this um, lever here, which is the anti-bear trap. And then under spring tension, that pushes down and locks and therefore locks in place the breech cover that way even if the sear failed the piston can't fly forward and claim your digits because it's being held in place. Um, that being said they never fully trust a safety and even with an anti-bear trap I'd never dream of um, loading a gun like this without retaining the cocking lever at the same time. So I'm just going to do that off screen. Okay so I've just put my pellet in, you can see there. So to bring this lever forward, you can see it's not moving there, you have to press down on the anti-bear trap and then that can come forwards. So I'm just going to fire this to make it safe. In terms of markings, there isn't a huge amount of them and I showed you most of them earlier on. The only other marking on this gun is either a 61 or a 19, depending on which way up you look at it, on the underneath of the front sight. Um, other markings I've seen on other TS-45s are the words Made in China, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I've seen serial numbers, which are usually found on the cocking lever. And I've also um, read reference to, but not personally seen, guns with Ime stamped onto the stock. And it's quite possible though that the ones with more English on were the ones intended for export. So looking at the sights, the rifle is limited to open sights, there's no scope rail on it, which I know would put off a lot of people, but I really like that. Uh, the sights are just standard iron sights, they're not fibre optic or anything. The rear sight is adjustable for uh, elevation, but not windage. Um, even though it is elevation adjustable, it doesn't have any range markings on it at all. Although other examples I've seen do have range markings. It has these metal protective sides, uh, which are either side of the height adjustable ramp. Um, and it just has a standard notch cut into the front of it. Uh, to adjust the elevation, you unscrew this knob on the side and then manually lift it up to where you want it and then tighten the screw to hold it in place. Now there's a slightly unusual albeit not unheard of, way of adjusting the rear sight. Uh, most other TS-45s though have a more conventional sliding bar over preset range notches. Um, the sight has a knob just on one side, but it does have actually a thread on the other side. So I'm not sure whether when it was new it would have had a knob on each side or whether it just has one, which is what's really needed, and you could just change it over to make it more ambidextrous. And I have only seen one other TS-45 with this style of rear sight and that one also had just one knob as well. And the sight is fixed in place and not removable but 
seeing as this rifle doesn't have capacity to mount a scope, there's no real reason for you to be remo uh, removing it anyway. Now, this style of rear sight means you can make very fine adjustments as you're not limited to kind of predetermined range markings, but it can be very difficult to um, adjust quite how you want it. You might want to just make an absolutely minimal adjustment and you end up kind of moving the whole thing and throwing out all of the uh, adjustments you've made so far. The front sight is a hooded post, which I like. And there's a cutout on the top of the hood, presumably to allow more light in on top of that sight post. Now the post itself looks like it is probably adjustable as the base of the post is threaded so it could be adjusted for elevation but I can't as yet get it to move. I've tried loosening it with some WD-40 uh, but I don't want to force it and break it. Uh, I haven't ever tried removing the front sight but it looks like it's just held in with a pin so it probably could be removed. It's difficult to see like this but the sight picture isn't actually too bad at all uh, both in terms of what you can see as well as just the view looking down the sights. Uh, I always quite like looking through a protected rear sight up towards a hooded front sight. The sights are basic but I quite like them, although it would be nice to have some range markings. But of course the real test is how accurate they are, or to be more precise, how accurate the gun is. So I'm going to test the accuracy. I'm going to fire 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a range of around 12 meters, and I'm going to be using these 8.4 grain Air Arms Diablo Field pellets. Here I have my target. Now I know it's slightly high into the left. I haven't got the sights where I'm happy with them yet, but what I'm looking for in terms of accuracy here is grouping. Now whilst it isn't the most accurate rifle in the world, bearing in mind that it's got simple open sights with limited adjustment, I'm actually really impressed. It is much more accurate than your average cheap Chinese Springer. To give it some context, this is a still taken from my Westlake B2 video I mentioned earlier on, and you can see just how bad the accuracy is compared to the Ime TS45. Now I've tested the accuracy, I'm going to move on and test the power. Now I'm going to put 10 shots over the chronograph and I'll again be using these 8.4 grain Air Arms Diablo field pellets. Now I've never chronographed this gun before, uh, I don't know what condition the mainspring or piston seal are in and I don't know how powerful it was supposed to be when it was new, so I really have no idea how powerful it is. Uh, I suspect it's probably going to be somewhere between 4 and 6 foot pounds though maybe. Here I have my chronograph test sheet. Uh, I've already done all of my calculations. Now over those 10 shots, I had a spread of 20.5 feet per second, with the highest velocity being 488.1 feet per second, and the lowest being 467.6 feet per second. So the average came out at 482.22 feet per second, which gives me a power of 4.34 foot-pounds, which is at the lower end of my estimate. Um, this gun is just a plinking rifle though, so that power is perfectly sufficient. Overall, I'd say this is a nice gun to shoot until you pull the trigger. It's very smooth to cock. The little buttons for the anti-bear trap and the lever release are nicely fitted and closed with a nice audible click. When you shoulder the rifle, it's very nicely balanced and the sights aren't bad. Uh, the experience so far feels like that of a much better gun than this probably is. However, you then pull the trigger. The trigger is not good and the internal action is very clunky. Uh, it's definitely reminiscent of what you'd expect from a cheap Chinese Springer. The TS-45 is undeniably a basic gun, but it's relatively well made. It's got some nice machined parts, uh, the barrel is surprisingly good, and with the exception of the pellet tube in the buttstock, there's no plastic to be found on it. Uh, with the anti-bear trap safety and that pellet tube in the buttstock, this particular rifle has a couple of nice features that not all TS-45s have, and it's in pretty good condition. 
Uh, the accuracy is not at all bad for a cheap Chinese Springer with open sights and the power is easily good enough for plinking which of course is the main purpose for a rifle like this. Now as well as for export to the west which is presumably the main market for these rifles they were also used domestically in China. Now I have read anecdotal evidence that these guns were actually used for marksmanship training by the young pioneers of China. Now I'm by no means an expert on the subject and I don't want to cause any offence but from what I can ascertain the young pioneers of China seem to be a youth movement that sound a bit like scouts with a communist ideology. At the time of making this video I can't actually find any other TS45 for sale in the UK so I can't give you the going rate in terms of price but what I can tell you is that I bought this one at a vintage firearms auction and I paid just £26 including buyer's premium which I think is a fantastic price. And to put that into context, uh, a modern Chinese made B2 air rifle, which is a fraction of the quality of this gun, has a retail price of nearly £60. So thanks for watching, I hope you found the video interesting. Uh, if so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.